Got some exam questions here on compound formulae and equations. If you want to have a go on these, test yourself. So the link's in the description for the video. Just download that, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so question one, write the equation for the reaction of calcium with phosphorus to form calcium phosphide. So that's calcium plus P4 going to Ca3P2. So to balance that, we need a 6 in front of the calcium and a 2 in front of the Ca3P2. Question 2, what's meant by the term empirical formula? We must give the definition to the letter. So we need to say the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Next part of the question, we've got to calculate the empirical formula of the compound and we must show our working. So the first thing I'm going to do is knock up a table for the three atoms. So we've got TM, S and O. So I'll construct a table. So the first thing we do is enter the masses or the percentages in this case. So 53.9 for TM, S is 15.4 and 30.7 for the oxygen. We're then going to divide by their relative atomic masses, so that's 1, 68.9 from the data sheet, 32.1 and 16. That's going to give us the moles, not 0.3191, so you need to give it to at least three significant figures. I think I'm going to give all these to four. Uh, sulfur is 0.4798. And the oxygen is 1.919. We now divide by the smallest. So it's of the smallest. So that's 1, 1.5, and 6. Now what we can't do is just round that up to 2. We've got to multiply out until we get whole numbers. So obviously we're going to double all of these. And that will turn that 1.5 into 3. So the simplest whole number ratio is TM2, S3, or 12. Next question, we've got to write the equation for the reaction between aluminium and oxygen. We're not given any formulae, so we're expected to know what these are. Aluminium oxide, we're told, is ionic. It contains the Al3 plus ion and the O2 minus ion. So aluminium oxide is going to be Al2. O3. That's the ratio of ions that sort of um, makes the charges equal and opposite. So, unbalanced equation first. Al plus O2 goes to Al2O3. And to balance this, I'm going to put a 2 there, and I'm going to put a 3 over 2 there. Now, if you're not a fan of that, what you can do is multiply it out. So we're going to double everything out, and you would get a 4 here. And obviously you'd get a 3 there, and you would get a 2 in front of that. Question 4, you can see I've started the process for the empirical formula. So I'm up to the point where I'm calculating the moles. We've got the percentages divided by the relative atomic masses, and that's given me to um, at least three significant figures. 1.667, 6.67, Three point three three and one point six six seven. I'm going to divide them all by the smallest, which is the one point six six seven. So I'll get a one there and a one there, four there, two there. They're all whole numbers. We don't need to multiply out. So it was C H four N two O. Part B suggest the formula of the ions present in this um, fertilizer. So we've got to have a positive ion and a negative ion. It's basically testing your knowledge of your ions. So in terms of positive ions, we've got obviously metal ions. They're all positive. Well, there isn't one in there. There's the H plus ion, or there's the NH4 plus ion. And the ion, the positive ion in this salt is the NH4 plus ion. So that leaves NO3 minus so this salt is actually ammonium nitrate. Question five, um, hexane combusts completely in oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. 
write a balanced equation for the complete combustion of hexane. So C6H14, so I'm doing the unbalanced version first, plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. I always do this this way, so I do the carbons first, so six carbons in the hexane, so I'm going to make six carbon dioxides. 14 hydrogens in hexane will make half as many waters because it's H2O, so I need seven waters. And then I add up the oxygens on the right, so six times two is 12, plus seven is 19, and I just use a top heavy fraction, 19 over two O2s um, is how I would balance that. If you don't like that, you can double it all out, so you'd have a two there, 19 there, 12 there, and a 14 there. The thing I will say about this reaction though is there is a topic um, later on in first year chemistry, enthalpy changes, and if you're asked to write the enthalpy change of combustion of hexane, for example, you would have to write it like that because the rule is you combust one mole of the substance completely in oxygen, so you'd have to do it that way. Question six now, we've got to write the iron equation for the reaction between aqueous silver nitrate and aqueous potassium bromide to form solid silver bromide as well as aqueous potassium nitrate. So you'll notice I've written some, um, some formulae underneath. So what I've done is when you've got something like aqueous um, silver nitrate, that's actually two separate ions. It's the aqueous silver ion and the aqueous nitrate ion. Likewise for potassium bromide, K plus Br minus. Um, the solid is just kept as AgBr. We've got aqueous potassium nitrate formed as well. And then once we've got the ions shown, we can cancel out ions that occur on both sides of the equation. So you'll see that we've got nitrate ions on both sides, and we've also got potassium ions on both sides. So the iron equation is just what's left. It's essentially what's changed in the reaction. So it's Ag plus Aq plus Br minus Aq goes to Ag Br solid. Number seven is another empirical formula question. You'll see I've already populated the masses and the relative atomic masses. So we're going to divide those and get the moles. So that gives us those moles there, divide by the smallest, which is obviously this one here. So it's a 2, 1, 4 ratio. They're whole numbers, so we don't need to multiply out. So it's Mg2SiO4. Question 8, another empirical formula question. This one is giving us the percentage of tin by mass only. Well, the percentage of oxygen is obviously going to be the um, difference between 178.8, so that's 21.2. Method same as before, so moles of tin we get 0 0.664 and 1.325 there. Divide by the smallest we get 1 to 1.995. So the reason I've chosen this question is because when you've got a number like that, that's so close to um, a whole number we're allowed to just round that up to two, okay? So effectively, that is two. So this empirical formula is SNO2. Question nine, I'm not gonna bore you with the method, it's just the same as before, so mass over relative atomic mass to get the moles, divide by the smallest, multiply out till whole if you need to, the answer anyway was C. Question 10, you can see I've already done all the working out. So we get a ratio of 2 to 1.5 to 1. So we've got to multiply that out by 2 and we'll get H4O3N2. Question 11, another sort of test of your knowledge of formulae and ions. Ammonium hydroxide is made from the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. Surprise, surprise. So that's nh 4 OH. Nitric acid, we need to know the formula of the common acids, that's HNO3. Contains the H plus ion and the NO3 minus ion. So we're going to form ammonium nitrate, so you can see I've got both of those ions there, ammonium nitrate. 
So we just need one of each to um, have equal and opposite charge. So NH4, NO3. And because this is effectively an acid and alkali, we're also going to make water.